My name is Billy Perigo, I'm a tech correspondent at Time magazine, and I've spent much of this year reporting on artificial intelligence. In a lot of ways, 2023 was the year that people began to understand what AI really is. But there were plenty of innovations as well. Here's three to keep an eye on. The first is multimodality. That's the ability of an AI system to work with lots of different types of data, not just text, but also images, video, audio and more. 2023 was the first year that the public really gained access to powerful multimodal AI models, like OpenAI's GPT-4, which allowed users to upload images as well as text. GPT-4 could see the contents of images, which opened up all kinds of possibilities. You could ask it what to make for dinner, based on a photograph of what was inside your fridge. Or you could ask it how to fix your bike, based on a photograph of a broken part. Google DeepMind's latest model, Gemini, is also able to work with images as well as text. In its launch video, after being shown an image of pink and blue yarn and asked what it could be used to create, Gemini generated an image of a pink and blue octopus plushie. The real innovation behind multimodality is that instead of just being trained on text, the new generation of models are trained on video, images, and audio. The belief inside many top AI companies is that this extra training data will help these models become more capable and more powerful. It's a step on the path, many AI scientists hope, towards so-called artificial general intelligence, the kind of system that can act in the world, make new scientific discoveries, and perform economically valuable labor. The second big thing to watch in AI innovation from 2023 is constitutional AI. One of the biggest unanswered questions in AI is how to align it to human values. If AI becomes smarter and more powerful than humans, it could cause untold harm to our species, some even say total extinction, unless somehow it's constrained by a set of rules that puts human survival and human flourishing at its center. Constitutional AI, first described by researchers at Anthropic in December last year, harnesses the fact that AI systems are now basically capable enough to understand natural language. The idea is quite simple. First, you write a constitution that lays out the values you'd like your AI to follow. Then, you train the AI to score its own responses based on how aligned they are to the constitution, and then incentivize the model to output only the responses that score more highly. If you run that cycle enough times, you're left with an AI that has been reinforced to behave in the way that you want it to, and to not behave in the way that you don't want it to. There are some problems with constitutional AI. It requires trusting that the AI is interpreting your constitution correctly, for example. But it's a promising addition to a field where new alignment strategies are few and far between. Of course, constitutional AI doesn't solve the problem of whose values AI should be aligned to. Today, it's a small number of Silicon Valley executives who are writing those rules. But by making the act of setting rules for an AI so explicit, constitutional AI could open the door to a future where the public gets more of a say in how AI is governed. The third big thing to watch this year is text-to-video. One of the noticeable outcomes of billions of dollars pouring to AI this year has been the rapid rise of text-to-video tools. Last year, even text-to-image tools had barely emerged from their infancy, but now there are several companies offering the ability to turn normal sentences into moving images with increasingly fine-grained levels of accuracy. One of those companies is Runway, a Brooklyn-based AI video startup that wants to make filmmaking accessible to anybody. And another is Pika AI, which isn't pitched at professional filmmakers, but at the general user. Tools like Pika and Runway could transform the user-generated content experience as early as 2024, but text-to-video is quite computationally expensive still, so don't be surprised if tools start charging for access. My name is Andrew Chow. I'm a culture and technology reporter for Time magazine. I've been covering the ways that AI has invaded culture this year especially as tools like ChatGPT and Dolly have come to the fore. It's really been transformative across cultural industries. It's provoked both enthusiasm and panic. And I think we've seen that a lot of these industries, the bigger industries, have really taken steps to protect themselves from what they view as sort of an encroachment and a threat to artists. On the other hand, there are a lot of small-scale artists who have been deploying these tools, mostly to go viral.
So on the defensive side, we've seen how AI figured very prominently into the Hollywood strikes this year. There was a historic double strike in Hollywood, both from the writers and the actors guild. Both bodies were very concerned about how AI might serve as replacements or take jobs from them. AI is already being used in writers' rooms, tools like ChatGPT being used to generate ideas for sitcoms, things like that. Eventually the writers secured protections so that the studios can't just basically type in, you know, give me five friends knockoffs and then not have to pay a writer for their next mega series. On the actor side, the Screen Actors Guild was very concerned that the studios might be able to scan the visual likenesses of people and then insert them into scenes <laughs> in perpetuity. So the Guild did secure protections so that if Dwayne The Rock Johnson doesn't want to have his body scanned and then used for the rest of his life or even after his life, he doesn't have to do that. But any actors who want to consent to have their body scanned, they can do so and then they will be paid even if it's their body double in scene. But there are many actors who feel that the AI protections on the contract aren't robust enough. They feel that there are loopholes that could disproportionately impact less famous actors who don't have the leverage to stand up for themselves. So the battle over AI in Hollywood is far from over. There have also been some significant lawsuits. Sarah Silverman and other writers sued OpenAI and other companies alleging that they are infringing on their copyright and training their AI models with their text. A similar lawsuit happened among artists like Kelly McKernan, who found that their artistic styles were being used as prompts for stable diffusion. George R. R. Martin and a group of writers also filed a lawsuit against AI companies from using their words and their writerly styles to train AI models. These battles are playing out in court and we're seeing exactly what kinds of protections judges are going to afford both to the artists who feel like they're having their copyright infringed and then the AI companies themselves. Then we turn over to the ways that AI is being used creatively. While AI is being used in sort of like minor and more technical ways in Hollywood movies, it's being able to be deployed on much smaller scales more rapidly. So we're seeing an influx of AI videos, especially on TikTok. We're seeing different trends of like, what if The Shining was created by Wes Anderson? or Harry Potter and Balenciaga was a sort of big trend of mapping a certain style onto an incongruous uh, group of characters or visual world. Then we've had all sorts of audio deepfakes, Joe Rogan getting into inane arguments about Ratatouille. A little guy pulling your hair, making you cook. It's a ridiculous concept. Especially in music, we've seen a lot of audio deepfakes of people recreating different songs or creating new songs in the voices of their favorite artists. Some musicians have reacted with revulsion, as was the case of Bad Bunny, who heard a song of him that went viral. And other artists have embraced it, including Grimes. Grimes created an AI vocal clone of herself, like software that allows people to sing as her, and then shared her favorite vocal creations. Play me up inside, inside. So we've seen two diverging paths where a lot of smaller scale artists are using these tools to generate excitement and recognition and virality. And on the other hand, there are a lot of bigger artists who feel like their work is being co-opted and they're taking steps to protect themselves. It's been a really interesting year for AI and culture and these battles are gonna continue to play out for years to come. I'm Will Henshaw, and I've been writing a lot about AI policy for time in 2023. And it's been a really important year for AI policy. ChatGPT exploded onto the scene in November 2022. Then in May of 2023, numerous experts expressed their concern about the risks that very powerful AI systems could pose in future, some warning about catastrophic or even existential risks. Now, all of this caused officials and politicians around the world in capitals to sit up and pay attention to AI. Here are three of the biggest moments in AI policy from 2023. First, in October, President Biden signed an executive order on artificial intelligence. Officials have been working on this for months, and it shows. 
It's 63 pages long and it has something for everyone. From those worried about the risks that very powerful AI systems could pose in future, to those concerned about labour market impacts from AI and how people could lose their jobs, and to those who want the government to more enthusiastically embrace the use of AI to deliver public services. Second, politicians from 29 countries gathered in Bletchley Park in the UK for an AI safety summit. The countries, which included the US, China, the EU and the UK, signed a joint declaration. They also secured commitments to safety policies from the companies developing the most powerful AI systems. Perhaps most importantly, the participant countries agreed to meet again twice in 2024, in South Korea in May and then in France in September. Finally, in the EU, lawmakers reached a provisional agreement on the EU AI Act, which will be the world's first comprehensive AI law. The Act, as currently agreed, would ban certain uses of AI, such as emotion recognition systems used in workplaces or in schools, and it would also impose strict regulation on AI used in high-risk areas, such as law enforcement and education. However, lower-level technical negotiations will continue into 2024 to settle the final details of the Act. And even after that, the Act won't come into force until two years after it's passed. But apart from that, 2024 is going to be another big year for AI policy. In the US, efforts to pass AI legislation are being led by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. But they'll need to move fast in order to bear fruit before the presidential election takes over Washington. The UN's AI advisory body will make recommendations for how a potential UN AI agency could look by the end of August. In addition to these two things, the world's two AI superpowers, the US and China, are going to continue to vie for technological superiority. Both countries will continue to invest huge amounts in development. Plus, at the speed AI is moving, there's likely to be much more besides this.